Hello there, my name is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I would like to issue a response to a video from another YouTube channel that I follow relatively closely, uh, Terminal for Life. Uh, Terminal for Life is a really great YouTube channel. The guy who runs it does a very good job of making regular bash and scripting content, and it's quite entertaining. You learn a lot. I learn a lot. And mostly because I've recently been getting into bash scripting myself. However, he did release a video the other day titled The Biggest Lie That You Were Told About Shell Programming, which I find myself fundamentally disagreeing with in a number of ways. So I wanted to just make a response video, and I've never done this before, but I figure it, it might be worth doing, could be interesting, and lay out my thoughts of why I disagree with the thesis of this particular video. And, you know, maybe start a little bit of a conversation about what the purpose of scripting is and what are the priorities in scripting and things like that. So to begin with, let's just start with his argument. And it's by no means a bad argument. Uh, his argument is effectively that the biggest lie that you are told about shell programming is that shell programming consists of stringing external programs together. I would say that's kind of the 30,000 foot brief view of the argument which, which he lays out. The thing that he is seeing and that irritates him is introductory shell content, introductory scripting content, which focuses on, in his own words, 1% bash, 1% the scripting language, and 99% other stuff, uh, specifically external programs things like sed and awk and wc. Now there's a distinction between an external program and a built-in, uh, and we're, we're going to talk about that very briefly in just a moment. But that's kind of his, his argument, and that the focus on these things from a, obviously from like a, a quote-unquote purity standpoint, it's not bash, it's not shell, they're external programs. So if you're going to talk about shell, you should talk about shell and not about how to use GNU core utils. But beyond just that, he also lays out an argument that an over-reliance on these programs is in and of itself a bad thing because it has negative consequences in terms of your ability as a shell programmer. It gets in the way, it's a crutch, it prevents you from learning the language and so on. So first things first. Oh, um, and and also that it results in your scripts being being more, or rather, being less efficient, being more inefficient. So I want to address that comment first uh, by agreeing with him. Obviously, using a lot of external programs is going to be less efficient than the not in terms of computational efficiency. He goes through a couple of examples of this in the video, which if you're interested, I suggest you, you take a look at it. There'll be a link in the description. I'll probably throw up a card, and, and here it is right now as well, in which he implements basic functionality from a couple of core utilities inside of Shell itself with, with just pure bash, uh, grep, and, and cat, tack, and a few other things. So specifically... He does an implementation of cat tack n, which looks a little something like this. I'll make that a little bit bigger. So this is doing cat tack n in, um, in bash. And in case you you don't know what it is, uh, cat tack n basically just adds line numbers to the file. So right, cat is going to dump the contents of a file to standard output, and all cat tack n does is line number it. So that's what we're talking about here. This is how you would do that in, in bash using pure bash, not using an external program, and this is using cat tack n. So his argument is that this is a lot more efficient in terms of computational complexity or computational time would be a better way of putting it. They, they have the same complexity, technically speaking. Uh, but than this, than using the external program. And that's right because the cost of actually calling out to an external program from a shell script is non-trivial. 
You're talking probably on the order of microseconds of time wasted switching over to the new program and not doing anything productive. So if you're looking at a relatively small file, it's going to be faster just to do it here than it is to pay the cost of switching out to a program, even though that program in principle might be more efficient than your, your shell script. So absolutely true that it's inefficient. Calling external programs is inefficient in the majority of common cases when the data size is small. However, my point of contention, I suppose here, is that if you're already writing shell scripts, why do you care about squeezing every last drop of performance out of it? Because we're, we're, we're talking about a cost, but it's not a huge cost in the majority of cases. And you're writing a script. So the thing about scripts is that they're by nature very inefficient. If I cared about doing this performantly, and I was really gung-ho about writing it myself, I would have just written it in C to begin with. As you can see, it's the, this is the C implementation of the same basic thing. It's not perfect. Uh, there's a slight issue here when the lines get to be longer than 1024 characters, but it's not a super big deal and it'd be pretty easy to fix. But that's not the point I'm trying to make here. In principle, it's not really that much more complicated and it's an order of magnitude or more faster to do it this way than to do it in shell like this, right? And while doing it in shell like this lets you A, do it in shell and B, gives you a lot more flexibility. You can, you can do other, other stuff here. You can filter it and you can, it gives, it gives you a lot more control over what you're doing. For the common case, this gets the job done fast enough and is far simpler to, to write. To my view, when you're writing a shell script as opposed to a program, you're doing it because you've made the decision, assuming that you are a programmer, say, we'll start with that. You're doing it because you've made the decision that it's not worth it to write the program. Because writing a program is more complicated. It's, it's, Generally, when you're programming in a low-level language like C, particularly, uh, there's a lot more stuff you have to worry about because the language doesn't take care of details for you in the way that shell scripts do. When you're looking at a shell script, it kind of does everything for you, and you just have to string out your basic line of thought. In a sense, you are very insulated from the details of the computer that you're using. And that allows you to write code fast as opposed to writing fast code. So when you're writing a shell script, you're doing it because you've made the decision that what you're doing, performance is not as important as getting the job done quickly from a human time perspective. And it is way faster if you want line numbers on your damn file to call cat like this than it is to re-implement cat yourself, right? This allows you to get on and do other productive things with your time as opposed to re-implementing. It's kind of a similar argument to libraries, right? Why would you write it yourself when you can use a library? And the argument kind of goes the same way, right? Writing, you, writing it yourself might be more fun. It might be more efficient. It gives you more flexibility. But at the same time, there's a time cost to that, a time cost that you can avoid paying by just using the damn library in many cases. And we see the same thing here. The other thing is that the audience of shell scripting, to my mind, is much broader than the audience of programming. So if you're a programmer who's writing a shell script, something like this is trivial. It really is. If you're not a programmer, this can be quite scary and intimidating. And the audience for shell scripting, at least in my mind, encompasses people who aren't programmers. One of the core, I, core focuses of shell scripting is making accessible to the computer user, not the computer programmer. And those are two very different groups of people. Making accessible to the computer user some of the more useful tools of programming 
to allow them to perform automation tasks on their own and save time. As an example of this, I have recently been involved in a number of little projects that involve simulations, running simulations, and not programming, just running simulations. So you, you have your simulator, you set up a configuration file, you run the simulator, you change the configuration file, you run the simulator. Maybe you run it a couple of times and average the results together for each thing. And you could certainly sit there on the terminal and just type, you know, run, enter, edit the configuration file, run, enter, write the number down, you know, things like that. Which is something that, you know, any old normal computer user would do. But with scripting, any old normal computer user can basically do it once, figure out, okay, this is the sequence of commands that I need to run. So I'm going to write all those in a file. Then I'm going to put that inside of a loop and I'm going to hit enter and the computer will run it for me, say a hundred times. So I can walk away and eat lunch and come back and it will be done. And then you can extend that and add things like the data processing afterwards. You can add graphing afterwards and you can do all this in like 30 or 40 lines of shell script that has lots of calls to external programs like sed and awk and um, GNU plot, things like that. So that you can basically in five or 10 minutes completely automate this thing and save you potentially hours of time. Doing that in programming, it's a little more questionable as to whether you're gonna save time because you have to deal with a lot of details that the shell takes care of for you. But with shell scripting, using external programs, you don't have to worry as much. It's it's a very, I don't want to be demeaning of shell uh, when I say this, but it's a very soft and cushy environment compared to programming. It makes it much easier to do things quickly when you are relying on external programs. When you're looking at something like this, if all I want to do is put line numbers on my damn file, why would I re-implement cat myself when that work is already done and I can save a ton of time and just call the program. So I understand where Terminal for Life is coming from in the sense that technically speaking, these external programs are not bash. They're external to bash and you can use them in whatever shell you want, so on and so forth. But when the majority of people are thinking about shell scripting, they're not thinking about programming in the traditional sense. They're thinking about automating the execution of external programs. And in that sense, external programs, although they aren't technically inside the bubble of shell, they are very much connected with it because shell exists as a way of automating the use of these programs so that normal people who aren't programmers can see many of the benefits that they would have seen had they been programmers. And so that programmers can see those same benefits in significantly less time. So I would not say that an over-reliance on external programs like this is the biggest lie you're told about shell programming. In fact, I would perhaps go so far as to say that using external programs like this is the entire point of shell programming. So those are my thoughts on the issue. I would love to hear what you have to say about it, what you think. Feel free to leave comments down below on this video and we can have a bit of a conversation about this. I'd love to know what your view on shell programming is as the as the viewer, whoever you happen to be. As always, I hope that you found this video interesting to some degree, whether you agree with me or not. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.